Hello, I'm Odin. And today, I'm gonna make a prop from my new favorite anime. I'm gonna make Tanjiro's Black Katana from Demon Slayer. I found an image of the sword that I liked and printed it out full size. I plan to make the blade from stiff foam, but I will still need to fit a graphite rod between the layers of foam. Katanas have a curve to them, and graphite rods do not. I checked to see how out of bounds the rod is going to be. I really don't want to, but I'm going to need to adjust the curve slightly so the rod's going to be able to fit inside of the blade. When I know it's going to work, I can cut the blade pattern out from the paper. So I'm going to have to make a couple of small compromises because I'm making this out of foam and I need to put a carbon fiber rod into it so it actually works like a sword and not like a rubber sword. I'm going to make the blade a little bit thicker and I did change the curve slightly because I need to put a straight rod into it. And I think I'm gonna get a better sword than the one I got last time. I'll talk about that later. I'm going to cut the blade from some six millimeter wet to foam. If my piece is wide enough for the blade. Good, good, good. I was worried about that. All right, all I need to do I cut a couple of strips two inches wide off of the end. That way the strips are wide enough to easily fit the pattern of the blade. I trace my pattern onto one of the strips of foam. I mark where the grip ends and the suba needs to fit. I look at how well the rod will fit inside of the blade. That's about what I want, where it gets really close to this edge but not all the way. So this isn't gonna quite work, but that's okay. I need to cut this. The rod is the right length, and now to make space for it inside of the blade. I mark the center line of my blade blanks, and I'm going to cut a channel with a router attachment on my rotary tool. In the past, the bit I mostly use is the number 125 high-speed cutter for making V grooves. Today, I'm gonna to use a 117 carving bit. I set the bit to a cut depth of about three millimeters, half the size of the graphite rod. To keep the blade blank from moving, I tape it down to the table, making sure it's sitting straight. This metal ruler works great as a small router fence. I just need to set the ruler so the router bit hits the center line. Okie dokie. The carving bit creates a half round channel in the foam. I make one in each blank, running the rotary tool back and forth to make the channel just a little wider, which will let me very easily fit the graphite rod inside the blade blank, keeping the sword from flexing. Now I apply not one, but two coats of contact cement to glue the halves together. Just let the first coat dry before applying the second. I can set the rod in place before the cement dries, but it needs to dry before the two halves can be stuck together. I'm glad this is taking longer to dry. Uh, Evil Ted talked about this the first time I saw him doing two coats of contact cement on foam, that the first layer almost seems to soak in a little bit. It seems to uh, evaporate and set up very quickly. The second layer, which is what I've got going on now, takes a lot longer to dry. Um, that's probably good. That means there's more of the material on the surface for better stickage. So, um, I'm gonna have to wait a few more minutes, and then the two pieces I should be able to put right together and get all the stickage that I want. Uh, I probably should prep some paper, because I bet I'm gonna need paper to help keep the two halves from sticking before I'm ready. The cutoff paper from my pattern is going to work as a temporary barrier between the glued parts. I can get the blade halves to fit how I want without having them stick before I'm ready. And when I am ready, I can pull the paper out and stick the halves of the blade together, and then I can really mash the halves together and make sure they're stuck. Then I cut the curved blade out from the oversized blanks. I make my cut outside of my pattern lines. So the graphite rod goes almost to the tip and only a little bit into the actual grip. Now the grip needs to be a little thicker anyway. So in order to combat this problem that the grip's got because the graphite tube isn't there, I'm gonna glue a couple of painter sticks to it. 
I mark how long the paint stir sticks need to be. I cut them to length on my bandsaw. These are the larger stir sticks for mixing a five gallon bucket of paint. Oh, that'll be a great grill. Oh yeah, that's gonna work totally. <laughs> I'll just sand it down, of course, because it's not supposed to be square, but yeah. That'll be fine. I apply contact cement to the tang of the blade and the wood for the grip. After a couple of minutes, the contact cement has dried enough that it has become sticky, which lets me attach the wood to the grip on both sides of the foam. I mash everything together because I want these to stay put. All right. That's not bad. That's, that's not bad at all. So the tip is still flexible, which is good. It'll pass inspection, right? You want to leave it in the car. All right. With the wood in place for the grips, I start to sand and grind the blade. I'm just cleaning up the cut edges, eliminating the rough cuts I made when making the blade. Then I can use the same bit to sand down the sides of the wood to match the width of the blade. Then I start to curve the grip, because it should be an oval shape, not flat and square. One thing I keep in mind is that the grip needs to be covered with a wrap. I only need to do the basic shape right now. The rotary tool can do the job, but I move to a sander to get it done quicker. Of course, I also need to watch what it is that I'm sanding, because the random orbit sander could remove too much wood, or worse, gouge the soft foam blade. I try to get both sides to look the same, and they have the same curve. I also sand the blade edge again, because why not? Oh yeah, that feels right. <laughs> the handle may still be a little big. I mark the ridge line along the blade. I hold my hand steady and use my fingertip as a guide. I also mark the center of the blade. And now I can sand the blade down to make it look sharp using both lines as a guide. I do it to both sides and I get a really good looking cutting edge. A sanding sponge can be used to smooth down some of the bumps and removes most of the tool marks. With the grip and the blade done, now I need to make the suba or the hand guard. I'm gonna use foamed PVC board to make the suba. I roughly cut out the circle, then sand the edge smooth. Seems like it's too small. It is too small. I cut it down too small. <laughs> All right. So I cut a second one by spinning the circle on my bandsaw, which gets me a much cleaner circle and it needs less sanding on the edge. I mark 12 millimeter across the center of the circle and take measurements from the blade so I can draw a hole that I need to cut into the PVC board. The six millimeter foamed PVC board is easy enough to cut with a hobby knife, and it's strong enough to not bend or flex even with a large hole in it. Cool. Okay, I wanna cut out the silver, not the black. Something that I gotta remember because that's not the way I typically do it. I cut out each silver triangle piece, and I'm careful not to overcut any of the corners. Because the material is already black, I'm not planning to paint it so I can't have any extra cut marks. The silver ink is easy to remove with rubbing alcohol. I left tiny little connector tabs between each of the triangles. That way I get more surface area to glue the suba to the blade. I fill in the gaps with more super glue and use an accelerant to set it quickly. I cut strips of two millimeter what the foam to make the blade collars and pommel pieces. Before I add any glue, I cover the suba with blue tape to protect it and keep it clean. The collars and pommel are wrapped around the blade and glued on with contact cement. An extra piece is glued to the bottom of the pommel because it should fully cover the end of the grip. I use a grinding stone to smooth out the transition between the sides and the end cap of the pommel and the seam on the collar. Next, I heat seal the sanded edges of the blade. The heat gun shrinks the fuzzy stuff left over from sanding. I cover the wooden grips with paper because I'm going to coat the blade with plastic dip. All of the exposed foam is sprayed with a couple of coats of Plasti-Dip spray, and then I wipe it down with a little bit of naphtha. 
This will give a gloss look appearance to the blade and I won't have to do any more painting to it. Then I use a little bit of silver rub and buff to color the collars and the pommel of the blade. Silver rub and buff isn't quite a paint, it's kind of a waxy compound and it gives a really good metallic effect. I remove most of the paint masking. I'm going to leave the Suba wrap for now. It'll protect it just a little bit longer while I wrap the handle. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of some faux red leather. This is a, a little, little piece I've got left over from when I made my Magic the Gathering spell book. So this is going to be just enough that I can cover the exposed areas that the black fabric wrap isn't going to be covering. So I need to cut this into four pieces. It's not really leather. This is a sheet of faux suede and it's made to be used in a desktop cutting machine. This material can be stuck to the wooden grip with contact cement. After all, my contact cement is called weld wood. The wrap that goes around the grip of a katana is applied in a specific way. I had to look up how to do it. This project is the first time that I'm wrapping a suka. So I'm totally cheating. When you actually do the wrap properly, you, you, you just keep tension on it and um, that's what holds it together. It's the whole point is to use the, the silk bindings or the cotton bindings or I guess leather and keep it tight. Um, I'm using polyester and it's not nearly as thick as it should be. So I'm cheating and adding a little bit of hot glue to, to help hold it in place. It, you know, this is a cosplay blade, not a traditional blade. So I'm trying to make sure I get the look that I want to get, but I'm adding a little bit of hot glue so it'll stay. Also, I'm using polyester and not the right weight of, of wrap. And I think that's affecting uh, as well, but uh, it's working, so let's keep going. Tanjiro's katana only has the diamond designs at the guard and at the pommel. The middle portion is just wrapped, and it's wrapped very neatly. I do mine in two layers, overlapping them but not crossing over each other, with one more set of diamonds at the pommel end. Now I feel like I can unwrap the suba and get a good look at the finished katana. Most of the materials I use for this project, I already had in the shop. I put a list in the description. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with this. I'm, I'm real happy with this. Uh, why am I so happy with it? Well, because I have actually made a katana before on the channel, but this one I've fully made from scratch and actually attempted to do the suka wrap and I'm pretty dang happy with how it turned out. So if you remember, way back in the day, about the first year of my channel, I did a video with three different swords, including building a katana. And in this particular one, uh, I used a Halloween prop uh, katana grip and instead of doing the, the proper wrap or even attempting the proper wrap, I just did a bunch of crisscrossing with some blue shoelaces. But um, that's not a, that big of a deal. This worked out really well. And honestly, if I could get the correct handle, I wouldn't be opposed to doing that for this if I needed to make one really quick in a hurry. But the fact that I was able to make this completely from scratch with a wooden handle, that makes it so much more mine and so much more cool and I was able to go ahead and get as accurate as I could. I know there's not enough spokes in the suka, right? The suba, suba, <laughs> said it wrong, in the suba, but um, I had to make a small compromise in order for the plastic to be able to, to handle itself. It would have been really a little too wispy without it, but you can see what it's supposed to be. It's easy to recognize, so forgive me for having too few spokes. Now, if there is another Demon Slayer prop that you'd like to see, like, I need to see a lot more episodes. This, this show is pretty cool. But if there's more Demon Slayer props that you would like to see, please leave some suggestions in the comments below. I'm gonna see them. We're gonna write them down in the to-do list. 
uh, the ever-growing, mythical, ever-expanding list of ideas that, that I do actually refer to and pull from. Oftentimes I see a, a new trailer coming out, it's like, oh, that'd be fun. But there's plenty of weeks where it's like, all right, what's in the list? What's been asked for a lot? So if you want to see another prop from Demon Slayer, please let me know in the comments below. I will check them. But in the meantime, I do know that there's going to be lots of different ways that you can make a katana. But this is how Odin makes. So if you give me another second, I'll talk a little bit about this katana. It has a wee bit of history, a little more than just, hey, this is what I previously made on my channel. It's actually a katana I previously sort of modified for Smosh. The, the, the grip and what little bit of handle there was, this was a prop that I had made for an episode where Anthony needed to commit seppuku on himself because the party was just not exciting enough. So it was... Uh, it was a cheap Halloween katana with the chrome blade that was a plastic blade, but I had cut it off and made a little like belt rig that he could wear under his shirt to make it look like he stuck it into himself. Um, so when the time came that I needed to make one, you know, make a full blade for my channel, it's like, well, I've, I've got this, I'll go ahead and use it. Now, I know you can't really see it, but the... Um, the, the same un underneath the, 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 the suka wraps here, yeah, that's, it's white gaff tape. That's all it is. It's nothing special. And seriously, it is blue shoelaces, and the lower collar is just black gaff tape. But um, it's a screen used smosh prop that was reused and remodified and made into a prop for my show. So this particular katana's been on three different videos now. I still like this guy a lot. I want to thank Mark Leonard, Marital Turnip8, Rick Rogers, and all of my Patreon supporters. Patreon members at the $5 and above level get access to my private Discord, which includes weekly games with me, property related chat, and early access to live streams. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.